This movie reminded me a lot of The Notebook and the, obviously with the flashbacks, you going back to the 40s and here. You seem to have this ability and you seem, I could be wrong, you seem more comfortable writing that time period. Is there something about that 1940s that speaks to you? Because it was the same way every time you write that, you seem to really get into that. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, it's an interesting period uh, to write about, right? You have the world wars, you know, you're coming off a depression of 20 years. And so much of that shaped the greatest generation, right? We had that, that entire, uh, that's a catchphrase, right? And, and what's about? So who were these people when they were younger? I think that uh, in, in this particular instance, you know, if I'm going to do someone who's, who's going to pass away of old age, you just kind of start going back and, and there you are. And, and that's what happens. I also kind of get, it's, you, you're running out of these people who, can, who will have actually lived through World War II. They're all yeah. fading away. And I wanted to have one of the last movies with someone who was in World War II mm -hmm. before you can't do those anymore. A modern and looking back. Do you find it a more uh, romanceful generation, do you think? No, I, I don't, no. I, I found uh, Luke and Sophia's story very romantic, uh, just like I found Ira and Ruth's, right? I mean, I think they're equally romantic, but in different ways and, and appropriate for the period. I mean, you can go sit by the lake and have a picnic at night and it's gorgeous, or you can go sit on the beach, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, I mean, you could have done, you could have switched those around and it would have worked, I think. Yeah. Right, then why is it surprising, uh, and you guys can speak to this, because obviously you have a life offset, you do mm -hmm. these things, you know, and we watch this movie and Luke shows up at the sorority with the flowers and the date, and everybody's freaking out like they've never, seen, like he's an alien <laughs> because he's doing this romance. I mean, is, is romance, do you, do you not see romance in your, in your life around you with the people you know and stuff, or is, you know, so much that it is shocking in the movie when this happens, or do you think it's an it's, it's an it's a lost fact that he's fan. a cowboy marching across campus and everyone's in flip flops and backpacks, and here he comes in his hat and march. Right. Yeah. You find, I mean, because it, obviously it is a very romantic film. I mean, do you see romance in this day and age around you with with your generation, the people that you meet and run into? Well, I think it's a, I see a different form of romance. I mean. You, you know, you, you think about Nick and, and when he writes his books, he's really, um, he talks about love letters a lot. And, uh, and I don't know that love letters necessarily exist in my generation in the way that they did back then. You know, I'll, I'll write love letters, but it's more of like a silly card with like hearts and, you know, there's like decorations involved. So I think it's just evolved over the, you know, over the years and especially with technology and texting and phone calls, people get lazy. Um, but there, there are ways to be romantic without going back and, and writing love letters like the old fashioned way or flowers. I think flowers come in all forms. All right. What you, cowboy? I think, uh, I think that it is. It is. Uh, the world has changed, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily have to. You 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 can still choose to you know be a gentleman. You can still choose to make those make those choices that uh, you know respect women if you're gonna you know go out and date them. And um, yeah, and it's tougher for guys, isn't it? Sometimes to be a little. It's yeah. It's it, takes, of, it takes balls to put it out there, yeah, right? It takes yeah. balls to put it out there because you can get rejected, and you know. But yeah. that's that's what you got to do. Yeah, and you guys had a great chemistry on set. There was mm -hmm. that was one thing that really grounded the audience in. Uh -huh. And there was one scene in particular where you're laying on the bed. And I think you're on your laptop, mm -hmm. and and you guys are at your uh, at the barn, and you kind of run and you dive on on the bed, and you kind of wrap her up, and you guys are having Kick this little it. moment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where it seemed like you guys had been friends forever. How much pre time did you spend together before shooting, or was that just a natural thing that happened as soon as the camera started rolling? That was pretty late in, in the shooting yeah. process, I think. Yeah, that was the end of the summer, probably. And that, yeah. it was so necessary for, for us to have one of those scenes in the film, um, only because that's how relationships are. You know, you do have these little moments of, of you know, relaxation, and you're just, we're doing our own things, but we're still interacting. And I think people can relate to that. When you see those moments, just like you say, it, 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 you realize that these people do love each other, and they can work together without it being about you know, careers or anything else. They just, they can live amongst each other and be happy and be comfortable. So it was really important for us to capture that at some point in the film. Now, as the writer watching them flesh out what you've written, was, was, it, was it happy for you to watch? Oh, yeah. And... Yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, we were very blessed. We had a great director, George Tillman Jr. And one of the reasons we selected him was he's, he's really good with uh, talent, right? He's really good with the actors. He, he's, he's got a, he helps them, I guess, stretch. 
And so we get what we need for the film in the end. But then, you know, he brought all this other great stuff that I think amplifies that, that, that feeling of chemistry, just everything from the way the sets look and, and, and the color and where he puts the cameras and how long he holds scenes and things like that. So, you know, it all came together in a way that was great. My first impression after watching it the first time, right, all put together was, wow, that's a great film. Yeah. Now, this question is obviously for those people who, who read the books and are going to see the movie. There, you took a little few liberties, which I understand you have to. There's uh, yeah. the time when, you know, Ira comes into the film a lot earlier than he does in the book. Yeah. As far as the meeting and all that. What, what were some of the reasons for that? And did you have control over that? And were you happy yeah. with some of those changes? Yeah. yeah, I have control. I work with the screenwriter, producer, the director, uh, different mediums. The, all of these changes generally come down to A, different mediums, or B, not enough time. That's what it comes down to. A novel's 400 words, now I have 120. One's a story told in words, the other's a story told in pictures. So some things work better, some things have to go. You, uh, the, the adaptation is just a series of choices. So, you know, bringing Ira in earlier in the film was necessary to link the two stories together. You know, right. it was, in the novel, I could do it in a different way. It still worked, but in the film, you had to do it this way. So I was fine. Well, obviously, I mean, from the decor we have around us yeah. with the bulls and the horses, it's it's a western. Would this have worked? And it, and why do a western? I mean, he could have been a stock car racer or, or anything, and still have been in that line. Why, why make it a a western? And and for you, would you have been as comfortable doing it if it was yeah, a race car? Yeah, I would have, I'll, 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 hell, I would have, that would have been great. I would have, I love. It. It's a cool idea. Racing car. No, it <laughs> to, me, this, to me, it wasn't really a Western. To me, it was not a Western, but yet yeah, the, the, yeah, the culture. Yeah. Western. I yeah. know it was a present day. You know, bull riding is a is a, a sport that's that's worldwide. Uh, it's huge in Brazil and it's huge in uh, Australia. Australia. And, uh, you know, uh, domestically, it's big. And I, I think it was just a great. Uh, I think it could have been set with other yeah, characters too. But, it could have. Yeah. You know, the, the the big thing is you make choices, and that was the choice I made. I loved. Rodeo, I loved bull riding. I hadn't seen it done on film, and I figured one was coming, right? So I better get in there first. Yeah. yeah. Did you talk to any bull riders to kind of get in their head to find out what they what makes yeah. them tick to, to do that over and over again? Yeah, we worked with the PBR. PBR was involved in the whole filming process, and uh, you know we had all the PBR guys there on set. So I was working with them from a couple months before we started filming all the way till the end. Yeah. Well, it's a fantastic job. You guys, like I said, connected great. Always, you know, you nail it and knock it out of the park each time. <laughs> so, yeah. great romance film. Appreciate your time today, Thank guys. You. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. Appreciate it. Good time.